Gravel riding covers a pretty broad spectrum, including everything from mixed pavement and well-maintained dirt roads to rough double track and forest roads that haven't seen a grader since they were first cut in. My gravel rides lean toward that spicier end of the spectrum, so when I picture my ideal bike, it's basically just a mountain bike with a rigid fork and skinnier tires. And that's exactly what my last two gravel bikes have been, hardtail mountain bikes with some slight modifications. My current one is a first generation Salsa Timberjack, it came with a suspension fork, so I immediately went on the hunt for something made out of carbon and with the right axle to crown height. Since the Timberjack isn't a gravel bike, I needed to find a mountain bike specific fork, and there are actually only a handful of options out there. Unfortunately, I soon found myself in shock from the prices of most brands in the rigid mountain fork game. But then I found DIY carbon bikes. With three options, modeled after higher end brands, but at less than half the price, I decided to give it a go. After a few months of riding on pavement, dirt roads, and some trails, let's talk about the pros and cons of this budget rigid fork option. Normally I'd start off with the pros and then go into the cons, but I have to give some background which comes off negative, so bear with me. DIY Carbon Bikes has three different rigid mountain forks that are based on the well-loved forks from Envy, Whiskey Parts, and Niner. I was only interested in the Envy and Whiskey versions because they have boost spacing, but I ultimately ordered the Whiskey Part style fork despite it being 50 bucks more because its axle to crown was 15 millimeters longer. My Timberjack uses a 120 mil fork, so the higher axle to crown would keep the geometry more in line with the bike's design. I ordered the Whiskey version and was told it'd be 15 to 30 days. 48 days later, my fork finally arrived. I will say it was at least a little understandable, I ordered just before Chinese New Year, and there was a disclaimer that that could extend the shipping time, but there was basically no communication after I ordered. Tai, the owner of the company, was quick to respond to emails, but I always had to reach out first. As happy as I was to see the package, my excitement was short-lived as I pulled off the bubble wrap and saw the wrong fork. I had been sent the Envy version, not the Whiskey Parts version. Tai was again quick to respond and did some digging to find the factory he works with had stopped producing the whiskey version and just fulfilled the orders with the Envy style forks. He apologized and said I could either return it or be refunded the difference in price, which was the option I took. I used that price difference to get an extended lower headset cup from Wolftooth to make up for the difference in axle to crown. While it was all kind of a bummer, I was just excited to have something that would complete my build. So putting all that background aside, let's get into the positives of this fork. While this is a mountain bike fork, I'm approaching this mostly from a gravel perspective, but a lot of the so-called roads I ride are unmaintained and more like a trail than anything else. And I have actually taken this on a few single track trails and things like that with the bike set up more as a mountain bike. One of the biggest benefits to carbon forks is how little they weigh. This fork weighs in at 630 grams, which is lighter than the Envy version it's modeled after, but that makes sense when you account for the fact that the Envy fork has mounting points. Compared to a suspension fork or even a rigid steel fork, you're talking weight savings in the hundreds of grams. And even if you're someone who doesn't care about the bike weight, you know that's a lot. My biggest concern, and one that I'm sure most other people feel, is that using a knockoff fork is going to end with a mouthful of dirt and a broken face. It's hard to measure durability in a short period of time, but three months of regular riding is also more than enough to just give a first impression. I put a little over 200 miles on this fork, which again isn't an incredible amount, but add in the fact that I'm no lightweight, and I think it's had some decent stress testing. I'm happy to report that I have yet to have it collapse and send me over the bars. In fact, I haven't noticed any signs of cracking, chipping, or any indications of failure. The bike even took an unexpected fall onto the pavement in my shop and came away unscathed. This might not give all of you peace of mind when using a carbon component like this, but I have complete confidence in this fork now. For some reason, the way a through axle interfaces with a fork seems to be overly complicated by some. In a perfect world, the axle would just always thread directly into the drop route, but we don't live in that world. I've dealt with my fair share of strange axle designs, but the DIY fork is one of the better ones out there. It uses a threaded insert that slides into one side, while the axle slides through the other. Instead of needing to use a wrench to tighten it down, it has a faux quick-release lever that can be used for leverage to tighten things up. 
I was a little caught off guard when putting the wheel in the first time as there's a slight amount of pressure needed to get the hub up into it, but I don't even notice it anymore. Overall, it's just a simple design that works well and I love not needing to pull out my multi-tool to remove it. Okay, so here's the best part. This fork is only $195. That's right, for less than 200 bucks, you can have yourself a full carbon, boost space mountain bike fork with clearance for a 29 by three inch tire. For comparison, the Envy fork is over $600, the Whiskey Parts is 525, and basically all of the other mainstream forks out there are at least 400. Even the Surly Karate Monkey fork, which is just made of steel, is 175 bucks. So the DIY fork is a very good deal at less than half the cost. Did I have some issues with the shipping time? Absolutely, but I'd probably say it was worth it for the savings. Now let's move on to the downsides of this fork. None of the DIY carbon forks have any mounting points on them. At this point, I don't do any bike packing or any type of riding where I really care about this, but many people want a rigid fork specifically for bike packing, so those mounts really matter. That said, there are a lot of companies now that sell innovative ways to strap stuff to your bike and they're fairly inexpensive, so that's always an option if this is a deal breaker. A lot of the value of a product comes from the name stuck on it and the bike world is no exception. So if or when I sell this fork in the future, telling a buyer it's from an unknown company that drop ships straight from China isn't gonna do me any favors. If it was the actual Envy fork though, I bet it'd hold its value fairly well after a year or more of use. Most people don't buy and sell bike and bike components like I do, so this might not really matter, but it's something to keep in mind if you like to buy and sell things frequently. And that's it. Those are really the only downsides in my opinion. Overall, I'd recommend this fork to anyone looking for a rigid carbon fork for their mountain bike. Whether you're wanting it for a gravel conversion or just mountain biking in general, it's inexpensive, lightweight, and seems to be durable. I'm sure the forks from brands like Envy and Niner have more attention to detail and are nicer overall, but at half the price, the DIY fork is a value that's really hard to beat. If you're wondering about something I didn't cover in this video, let me know down in the comments and I'll do my best to answer it. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like and share it and subscribe so you can see more in the future. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.